Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today as we are letting people kind of come in and uh, join in the event. Uh, take a moment before we get started to locate the chat area in the bottom right of your screen. I'm pretty sure we're going to have some questions for our guests today, which I'm super excited about. Um, and if you want, tell us where you're tuning in from today. We always like to know uh, all over the country. I'm in Southern California. Andy, you're in uh, Charleston, Charleston, South Carolina. That's right. All right. How uh, how humid is it today in Charleston? Always very humid. Always very humid. <laughs> it sounds about right. But uh, you guys, uh, it's a beautiful town for sure. Um, well, everyone, I'm Gabriela Cabrera. I'm the CEO and co-founder of KSphere, and I'm really excited today to be joined by Andy Sievers as we introduce the latest updates to KSphere's integration with Case Status. So Andy's a technologist. He's an entrepreneur. He's one of the founders of Case Status, which is a very cool client communication platform and app for law firms. And he's going to show us a little bit about that before we talk integration. So welcome, Andy. Yeah, thanks for having me. Excited to uh, to dive in. We've been um, we've been working together for a while, and this is uh, a nice uh, you know it's a great time to show what we've uh, been working on over the last uh, um, one to two years. So. Yeah, I mean, I think I saw case status for the first time. I mean, three four years ago now. It's crazy to think about that. It feels like COVID just as a blur, right? But. Um, Super excited for everyone to kind of hear some of the new stuff that you guys have rolled out over the last few years. So I imagine many of you joining us are already current uh, law firms using KSphere, but a little bit about us in case you're not. We are the number one rated legal software for personal injury law firms on the plaintiff side. Our platform is really designed uh, from intake to settlement to drive better results for your clients and your business. So we're all about process. We're all about efficiency, all about optimization. And that's why we're so excited about this partnership with Case Status, because they bring a lot of that. And of course, elevating also the client communication and client relationship component. Um, so with that, Andy, I'm going to hand it over to you. And uh, I know you're going to show us some cool stuff. Awesome. Well, hey, I really appreciate it. And um, for those, uh, again, on the chat at the bottom right, feel free to uh, interject. I don't necessarily want this just to be uh, uh, me talking to everybody. Um, questions are always helpful because uh, as we, you know, as we go through this, there may be things that come up that would be, uh, um, it would be really helpful to have an answer. And I'm sure not, you're not the only one thinking about it. So um, please uh, let me know. Well, uh, again, I'm Andy Sievers, um, CEO and co-founder of Case Status, and um, really we're an all-in-one information hub for clients. And so that's case updates, messaging, scheduling, a client portal, appointments, all in an app on your client's phone. I mean, our our goal is um, we integrate with case management software like Case Peer to really enhance the client journey, to um, give clients a roadmap of what to expect, and really the place that they can go to have um, information about what's going on in their case. And so we really, uh, we were founded, my business partner was a personal injury lawyer. Um, she continues to sit on our board and runs a law firm here in Charleston. And really this came out of having um, 200 clients in the personal injury space. And really um, knowing that with the number one complaint state bar associations um, being lack of attorney communication, there's there's some room for an improvement um, and, uh, and really, um, when we think about, for those that are familiar with Net Promoter Score, um, the, there's room for improvement on the Net Promoter Score. And so we um, uh, built this platform um, and have really grown over the last four or five years um, to, to really help solve this. And so case status is um, the, one of the reasons that we are so successful is really simple. We have made adoption for clients really easy. It's as simple as a text message to their phone, one click to download on iOS or Android. They type in their phone number, they get a pin and they're into their account. So people always ask, well, are my clients going to use it? And, you know, we have um, law firms from um, Pond Mahaki and Philly to Rich, uh, Science and Kirk to Richard Harris Law um, on the big side to, um, to uh, Blade Injury Law, small firm in Atlanta. There's all sorts of different use cases for case status, but it only works if clients can access the application. Um, our oldest known client um, today is uh, is um, in their late 80s. Um, hopefully soon um, we'll, we'll have a, a, a known client in their 90s. Um, 
all the way to um, only Spanish speakers, um, uh, low income. I mean, the, the demographic of consumers that want access um, to case status is all over the board, which I'll talk about here in a minute. And so really the benefit of case status is two prong. One, when clients rely on the mobile app, when they come to the app to find the information that they're looking for versus having to call, email, or just be frustrated, usually they end up with all three, this now gives them another option. This law firm here, they have um, uh, 6,400 personal injury cases. Um, this was uh, over a year, so February 21 to January 22. They had 38,000 logins. For every client that checked the app, only 16% actually reached out with a question. Today, that number is less than 10%. Usually we see about 7%. So you think for every 100 clients that would have asked a question, only seven are gonna reach out in a more efficient way. The labor savings, the time savings, and really the way that it changes interactions with the client. We're not talking about removing interactions. We're talking about fewer, more meaningful interactions that can really have. And uh, less of those interactions that interrupt your day, right? Mm -hmm. You're now having more outbound, meaningful interactions generated by your team rather than the interruptions, which is, I think, for most firms that that reactionary stay is the most difficult to work in. Yeah, absolutely. And this industry tends to be very um, reactive, right? Clients mm -hmm. ask for updates and, you know, we give them, but case status really flips that where you become proactive and you can, mm -hmm. you, know, you have your case management, so you have case peer to build your internal task management and workflows. And then you can use this integration that we've built to automate the updates to clients. So for example, when we go to treatment, let's remind them every Monday um, that they need to get treatment and then remind them that they can actually log treatment in the case status mobile app that's firm branded for your firm. Um, in stage two in the release from treatment, let's assign these three checklist items that need to be done and let them know here are four checklist items that we're working on. All of those pieces really, um, you become proactive in the way that you send out updates rather than reactive um, in, uh, in responding to what's happening. And so that really is a big difference for a lot of law firms um, who, you know, today, we understand, especially with COVID, you know, people want to know what's going on. People with, you know, they have access to their Amazon packages. They can, um, they can track their Domino's pizza, yet they have to call or email their law firm. Um, it is really a transformative way to update clients. Secondly, the growth side. So we do something that's unique. Um, and uh, Gabby and I were talking about this right before, which is throughout the case process, we ask clients for feedback. The net promoter score for those that um, we won't spend a lot of time on it, but zero to 10, how likely is a client to refer um, your firm to a friend or colleague. So I always pause here because sometimes people miss the importance of this feature. I get, I fly Delta, they ask me for a feedback score and I skip it. A lot of us probably ask our clients for feedback at the end of the case, maybe through the process. It could be via email or you we say, hey, we'll give you your check as soon as you um, fill out this feedback survey. Well, what we do that's unique is when we have clients on the app, which we tend to see 70% client adoption of the mobile app, the other 30% via text. If you're a firm with a thousand clients, you now have a feedback score at every phase of the case of 700 clients. And now think about the impact of that. So you now know if they're unhappy, you can do something about it. You can build process or even automation around that score. When they get to a later stage, they give you a high score. You now know who to ask for reviews and referrals. I mean, the impact that this has on a law firm is really, really substantial. And it's not hard to understand when you know they're unhappy, when you know which staff members are giving a better experience and a worse experience, you can, you just have more management controls to really scale your client service effectively. Yeah, so you can make better decisions about your business. And, you know, the MPS score too, I know you touched on it a little bit, like us in the tech world, like we live and die by MPS. So for those of you that are case for clients twice a year, you'll see a little bar pop up like, hey, how likely do you recommend? Like, we listen to every bit of feedback that goes through those. I have a pop up in my Slack channel. So if you have any gripes or anything nice to say, I will see it as does the rest of our team. But, um, you know, that NPS score is a really important metric to know how you're trending both short term and long term. And Andy and I were talking like it, this is something we're starting to hear more and more in the legal space. And it's thanks to companies like Case Status that are bringing this concept, right? I think the old concept was, well, let's work hard and get that great review at the end of the day. And it was solving the, how do we get this great review? 
And I think the thing that's really exciting about case status is that you're actually getting temperature checks throughout the case. So you have a really good chance to intervene and improve the experience and later turn that into a five-star review mm-hmm. down the line. And I, I, you can, I, you're, you're kind of getting there, Andy, and I'm sorry, I jumped in. Oh, it's like, all right. Knowing where that client ends up can shape kind of how you inter, you know, interact with them and ask them for reviews later, right? Yeah, absolutely. And it and it's you know, people don't even realize how much of a retention tool it is for staff because there is a concept, you know, it's the loudest clients, right? And so that can be it can be tough for a, a staff member who's constantly having to feel the, the frustrate the you know, the frustrating calls, the angry emails. But the reality is that many, many clients are happy and they're engaged. And this actually gives them a channel in which to give that feedback. And you know, the most important thing to take away, if this is the only thing you take away from this, is that we require the clients to give that score at every phase. We require it. We don't let them skip it. It's as easy as, you know, you could put a skip button, but we we have zero to 10 and they just have to hit a number. If they hit a seven, that's exact. that means they're, they're not going to hurt your firm, but they're not going to promote your firm yet. Well, that's exactly where they should be in the first stage of the case. But as they, as you build trust, as you handle their process, as you really meet your ethical duty of care, now they're happy. You set good expectations about the settlement amount, and now you know for certain they are an advocate. Now that just becomes one. They're going to be out there talking about you positively. You know, we tend to see this net promoter score go from a 32 to a 63. And this is actually a little bit old. It's even higher than that. I mean, if you're getting 30% of your business from referrals, that will increase by 30%. That's what Google has proven with that promoter score. And so that can be real tangible dollars from a growth stamp. Over 60s pretty amazing score. Yeah. Right. And we, we that is all a, dream about being in the over 60 range. Right. Know? And that is just a straight yeah. like raw score of all of our case status customers together awesome. that we aggregate together. Yeah. And so, you know, the, I want to continue to move through this. Um, but really this idea, you know, there are a lot of, there's a lot of legal tech coming up, oh, AI, and, you know, we're going to, we're going to do all this, you know, this, this magic behind the scenes. We're not trying to be that. We're saying that 30 years ago, banks were saying, hey, we don't need online banking. People love to call us. They love to come to the branch. But the reality is 30 years later, you would never go to a bank that doesn't provide online and mobile banking. It is the minimum software set that is required. And if we, you know, we really look at how the ABA is defining changes in the ethical duty of care, technology is a big piece of that. And if, if we believe that, you know, today, nobody says, oh yeah, like the bank is not meeting their, um, their duty of care for me. Um, well, I mean, some would say that, but we have this, you know, software solution, this technology that we require, we want access to what's going on in our bank and ownership over the process. And that's really what case status does. And so it really, um, when we look at this law firm technology triad, case peer really handles the client intake piece. It really handles the case management piece, but we believe that there is a gap. And I think that the 32 net promoter score, which is low supports that there is a gap in client success or really a dedicated focus um, on the client. And so as we um, think about you know case status long term, we really believe that um, client success tools for the legal industry and service-based businesses becomes a norm across the legal industry. And, um, and today we have a, a few hundred law firms that would, um, would support that. And so we're really excited to um, talk with CasePeer today and talk about our integration um, because you know that's really how we start the efficiency. Um, we we want to take out the any of the manual entry. We want to make sure we're collecting the information that's required with our ethical duty of care, and and ultimately give the client the experience that you know really they have in every other industry and really expect when they hire a lawyer. Let's you know let's you know let's uh, meet our meet that care um, throughout the case. And so that's uh, Gabby. That's all I have. I will uh, hand it back to you. Yeah, well, and I'm sure that you guys have questions, so go ahead and chime in. But we're going to talk a little bit about uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the integration. So um, thank you, Annie. And again, it's it's just a fantastic uh, a fantastic product and, and concept, and you guys are bringing it to life, which is amazing. Um, and overall, like what has um, so 70 percent adoption rate is what you guys see of the app, with the rest of the communication being handled over text, right? Exactly right. So it really becomes a communication shift in the way that um, law firms think about, you know, with, with phone calls and emails being their primary 
avenue. Maybe they do have a texting piece too. The problem that texting can cause just by itself is an expectation with clients that you will be available at all times and in real mm -hmm. time. When you see the mobile app, because there's value in the platform, there's descriptions of each phase, there's frequently asked questions, timelines, who you're working with, appointments, what the law firm is working on, what you're working on, all of those things are really key to giving the client you know, what they need before they need to reach out. And we're not saying, we're not saying, hey, let's uh, open up case peer and give them every single internal note. That would be a nightmare. But this really takes what you have internally and we integrate in a way that we give the client an external view, not to create more work, to give them what they need. And what they need, the bar is not extremely high. Mm -hmm. But what it requires is the clients to adopt, which we've made easy. It's the clients to stick around. There has to be value. And then when you do those things really well, you become partners in the case and it, it really has big impact long term. Um, I saw a question from Margie about cost. So we do, um, there are a number of different ways that case status can be configured all the way down to just text up to um, our full platform that has marketing features. I'll say that we do buckets based on active case volume. And so mm -hmm. um, if case status works really well, you can cut your staff down, which we don't want to do. We want to grow. And so you can really grow substantially with the same staff size. And so um, we set up a contract. Let's say you have 100 cases, zero to 100 cases, and that cost will not change for the length of the contract. It allows you to grow. And our belief is, you know, if you have 100 cases and by this time next year, you have 150 cases and we've helped with 20% of that because of net promoter score, because of mass messaging to clients, letting them know happy birthday or even past clients that, um, you know, if it's, you know, let's just say it's $8,000 per client is the average. That's really easy math to pay, you know, 5% more for case status in the next mm -hmm. year. Perfect. So a little bit about the integration and keep those questions coming. So first of all, it's easy to activate. That's always really important. Um, and obviously, if you reach out to case status or to case beer, if you're a client of both already, we're happy to help. But um, and I'll show you guys on screen where you initiate that. But essentially, it'll be an exchange of uh, of API keys. Um, there is an automated nightly sync of client contacts. So that's a part of the process when you start using the integration, it'll sync everything over um, to, uh, to case status. Um, there's a key component, of course, is that key status changes. You'll work when you onboard with case status, you'll map those over to um, stages that you've developed there, right? So for example, most firms that are in a typical PI case, you're going to have treating, like pending demand or collecting meds, uh, you know, demanded or negotiations. And Andy, you know, the couple extra ones that, that are wrapping up the case. And so for those, again, you'll map your treating case status to whatever you call that stage in, um, in case status itself. And, um, and that's really cool. So it'll automatically update those and notify the client when they're using, whoops, sorry, I left off a W off that URL, but hopefully it goes to the right place still. Um, and then uh, case status files. So the client can also through the app share files, photos, things like that. Those will, uh, those will automatically save into the case documents tab in case beer. And then of course, we're logging the messages as well in case notes so that all of that is documented on the case and your case notes can remain that one source of truth. So here is where you'll see the account settings. If you're new to the integration, you're gonna see an activate button rather than a manage button. And there you'll see your API key. Um, and then you'll communicate that to your case status rep, which they'll use that to activate the integration on their end. And, um, and then they'll also provide you with something that you'll copy and paste into the case status uh, slide here in case beer as well. Um, so yes, we'll, I just yeah. interject real quick, just uh, a couple of questions and I wanna make sure I don't miss them. I think it's easier for me to um, answer them out loud. As far as the demo, um, you can go to casestatus.com and request a demo. So the platform is a full client management platform. Our goal is there There are many, many things to do to manage the client. And our goal is to not um, overlap with case management because there are a lot of things to do to manage a law firm um, in a practice that um, you know, 
that need to happen. And, and that's why Case Pure continues to build and we continue to build. And so our goal is to um, request a demo. We will understand what you care about and we'll structure a, a, a timely demo um, and presentation for you specifically, because it would take three to four hours to demo the full product um, if we were to dive in um, very specifically. Um, the next question was, how does case status differ? And so today, um, most case management tools have web-based client portals. And in some markets, that works. But in the personal injury space, you know, you may have a third of your clients that don't have an active email address. That's going to make it tough to get onto a, a web-based client portal. Um, most of our clients, 80%, 90% don't have computers. And so um, accessing through Safari or another Android-based mobile browser is very tough. And so mobile is key. And that's really what first differentiates is the uh, the ability to onboard clients that's who we focus on the end user is is our focus the case management's focus tends to be on the law firm where it acts absolutely should be and so we provide that support we make sure that's easy to help them get on and then when they're on it really you know my understanding of the client portal on, on case peer is primarily communication based and there may be some um, some stages lightly our goal is everything they need in the case virtual hearings scheduling appointments treatment tracking the team you're working with um, the ability to loop in um, three different stakeholders maybe it's a husband and wife for a minor this becomes really a, an enhanced way to manage those clients and that's where it starts we can um, we can spend a lot of time going into that but um, the client portal as a feature is one piece of the really the case status platform um, as a whole and we do have a web-based platform but i will say um, across the industry you know we integrate with a lot of case management tools most case management tools get less than a one percent web-based client portal adoption it is really really hard to get to, and that's us too it's really hard to get people to adopt yeah the web. app component is really critical yeah. in my yeah. book like for this yeah. client experience it takes it to the next level Absolutely. Um, we do. You do get notified in Case Peer when messages come through. We do have the ability for you to send a message from Case Peer through Case Status, which is a huge benefit. Not many of our integrations have that um, capability. Um, documents to be moved to. So today um, we sync back the documents to Case Peer, and then I believe um, Case Peer has some functionality to be able to. Yeah, run. nothing right now, Christian, to like automatically say which folder they go to, just because that could vary uh, by case. But um, but that's good feedback. We'll uh, we'll certainly pass that on to the dev teams as they continue to nurture the integration. But um, but yeah, right now we're just saving the documents tab, and then it can get filed and moved and categorized wherever it needs to go. And last thing I'll say, because um, Margie just uh, commented and actually made a really good comment, is you can actually go to casestatus.com right now. And at the bottom, there is a, a form that you can actually fill out and it will text you a link to case status as if you were a client. So I do say the full case status platform from a law firm's perspective um, requires you know, to really talk to some of our reps. But you can actually get, if, if you just want to see what the client would see, we can send you an example case automatically. And that exists at the bottom of um, casestatus.com. So Margie, thanks for uh, um, for commenting that you just downloaded because we uh, we really um, I appreciate that. I would have. I, I love that. And that status line is it's amazing. So, you know, and that's fully customizable. So it can be two to 12 stages. You can map them to diff from, you know, you may call it something in case period. You can map it somewhere else um, in case status. Uh, you know, we, we provide our templates to make onboarding really easy. But I mean, we have firms who do videos for managing partners. They do links to um, exciting things that are happening in the firm or um, or there's so many ways that you can customize those to really give the client what they need. And it doesn't end during implementation. You get assigned an account manager who will work with you over time to build those out because on day one, you may not know how you want to automate your full client management practice. That takes time a lot, but we have reps that are dedicated to walking you through that over time. Let's start with getting you onboarded. Let's start with getting your clients on the platform. And then as you start getting the same questions, let's build those into the stages. Let's build um, the process into your marketing team's communication strategy. We have mass messaging. So you could mass message everyone and say, hey, we're out of the office for COVID or um, happy holidays. Or maybe you just want to hit your PI cases that are in treatment and say, hey, it's really important to go get treatment. And so all these pieces are things that um, we can, you know, we can walk through as, uh, you know, if you allow us to. Yeah. So uh, we do have some FAQs here too, because we anticipate some of these common questions. So when can you activate? You can activate today. 
Um, now, of course, if you don't have case status, you're going to have to go to their website and reach out and we'll have other ways for you to get a hold of them as well. But this integration is available. It's been available for a little while. We've just recently made some great improvements that make the experience better for, for our mutual clients. Um, what are the biggest advantages to leveraging the integration? Um, Andy, do you want to take this one? I think it's a little obvious, but uh, but would love to sure. hear your thoughts. Yeah, happy to do it. Really, the, the key is eliminating any type of double entry. I mean, um, it doesn't mean you're not going to be interacting with clients through case status. That is somewhat of the, the point when those arise. But we want to take out case syncing. We want to make that automated. Or, I mean, we have that as an automated process. When clients communicate with you, syncing that back to case. So it's so you have that record, you're maintaining your ethical duty of care, you're not missing anything. It also, if you have any client staff members still texting from their cell phones, get that out of there. Cut that out. <laughs> you know, if, if, you know, if using a personal Gmail account breaches your ethical duty of care, using a personal cell phone, that, that, that is a, a quickly coming piece of the legal industry that is go we're going to see a shift in. Um, and then the documents that you're receiving, having them sync, you know, it is a much more effective way of getting documents when they can simply snap a picture and send it through the app or via text. Mm -hmm. And that syncs to where you um, need it to go. Um, you can have checklist items, automatic reminders for them to submit those things. And then, you know, I think a big uh, piece of this too is in each stage, you update the stage in case peer that automatically updates the stage and case status. And that starts a workflow of the things that your staff are doing constantly. And so that means that your staff gets to be happier. They get to spend less time on the daily kind of mundane tasks and really can move these cases faster and more effectively. Yeah, no, I think that's, uh, you took the words right out of my mouth. I love it. So talk to me a little bit about onboarding. You've touched on this uh, to some extent, but obviously it sounds like there's a lot firms can do. Some firms are going to get started with the basics. How long does it usually take to get started? Walk, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, absolutely. And so our implementation process is very much designed to be um, high touch and, and you know, we want to walk you through this process. Now, we have the advantage. A lot of people say, well, hey, I just switched from needles to case peer. And like we all know needles didn't do a great job with the data. And so like case peer, I'm sure spent a ton of time to help get that data migrated over. Well, we have the advantage that that's already been cleaned up. And so we don't have that hard task of onboarding. In fact, case status is not overly complicated to learn. Most of your staff will just be communicating. A lot of the process will happen automatically. A lot of the notifications go in case peer. And so our implementation process for a small firm is typically 30 days or less, sometimes um, Firms are ready to go and two weeks later, they'll be up to speed. Really the piece that can take the longest is just making sure that our templates for stages are good and then getting everybody scheduled for training. We know we're all busy. So sometimes the full staff doesn't have um, time that same week or the next week to do training. But even for larger firms, so Pond Lahaki, um, they're one of the largest firms in Philadelphia. Um, we got them up to speed in 30 days and they already, within 30 days, we're seeing a decrease of in, inbound phone calls by 30%. When you're getting thousands of inbound calls a day, that's significant. That's the impact they expected to see with full adoption. And, you know, 70% adoption happens over really the first six months. So you know, they, they saw 30% adoption in the first 30 days, but that, you know, as you build into your process, as clients, you know, start, um, understand when they join your firm, understanding this is the process rather than 12 months of having to call, it just mm -hmm. becomes the go-to for clients and, and how they onboard. Well, it's it's exciting when we start seeing that impact at a small scale, you know, even before their um, their clients are fully ramped onto the app. Yeah. And so some of the things like developing the stages, that would be like if you wanted FAQs, if you've got videos that you want to share, what you're calling that stage, presumably that's something that you work with the firm on to kind of help uh put in place and exactly and we have some you know some templates that you know we've crafted over time with firms you know firms that have really been the most effective they've been with case status for many years and they've they've figured out here are the things that people need to know mm -hmm. here are the things that really we get a lot of calls about in stage two and so that becomes our starting point which awesome. for many firms go yep that's my process that's good thanks 
like we do, you know, where we have PI pre litigation and then, okay, a litigation track just in case we, uh, you know, we go to trial, but, but I don't want to give the client that expectation when we know the odds of that happening are, you know, small mm-hmm. percentage of the time. And then last thing I'll say about the onboarding process is really our goal is to get you communicating with clients as fast as possible. And then you go into a phase called optimization. And that optimization phase can really last as long as you'd like it to. We want to work with you to say, okay, what are the checklist items you're assigning? When do you need to have them schedule an appointment with, with you or a virtual appointment or a hearing or things like that? You know, our team um, is really good about asking those questions. And, and maybe you don't know what that process is. That's okay. That's, that's part of what we do is a lot of firms haven't really thought about it. They're really, really focused on the back office task management, the workflows that they have internally. But what are, where are the times where it's been three months? And the client's saying, I wonder what's going on. You know what? We need to, in stage, uh, when we're in you know, negotiation or drafting the demand, if nothing's happened in 30 days or two weeks, automate a message to the client saying, hey, nothing new has happened. Let us know if you have any questions. All those things can be built out um, over time. That's very cool. Awesome. Well, thank you. I mean, it sounds like it's uh, it's as intense or as fast as firms want it to be in the sense that it's uh, it's about them also being engaged and working with you. And I love that you have the templates because, uh, you know, keep it keep it easy. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we talked already a little bit about pricing. Um, I don't know if you had anything to add to that, but I know that question came up early. We know that question comes up every time. Um, uh, one thing regarding the actual integration with Case Beer, there's no cost to 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 on our side. So your Case Beer subscription doesn't change or anything like that to, to turn that on. Yeah. The only other thing, you know, it's really, really reiterating is our objective is um, repeatability. We understand that you're trying to grow, you're trying to become more efficient, you're trying to find ways to scale your process. And our goal is not to every month have that price tier up. And so we do a minimum of a 12 month contract that is um, a little bit different because we're not just talking about 10 staff, 20 staff, 100 staff. We're talking about every client. There's an ethical duty of care there that's really high. And we believe that we, you know, this is a communication shift that um, we are going to fully invest in your firm's success. And we say that is minimum of a 12 month agreement. But let us show you in the process why that's worth it. Talk to other customers, talk to the people who trust us, and we'll lock that price in for the length of the contract. You want to do a longer contract? Great. We're, we're in for this because. If you have 500 clients and 400 of them are on the mobile app, we understand this is a this is a long term relationship. This this is going to really, you know, in the same way that online banking really changed the way bankers interact with clients. I mean, there virtually aren't bankers now. Well, bankers, I know that was going to be my response. I know it's like well, bankers. You know, there will always be a need for lawyers in this space, but the way that that clients, you know, are the way that they want to interact is just different than you know, a lot of um, law firms are interacting with clients today. And so um, our goal is to partner with you long term and keep that cost the same um, over time and really help grow with you. I love that. Um, thank you. So we've talked about this a lot, but I like to remind people where can they learn more? So this is just a screen grab for from the website in case people can't find that book a demo button. Is that a good place for them to start? Yeah, that's a great, great spot. There, there are not a lot of uh, other that you can go to book a demo or you can scroll down and access the mobile app, but we try and make it easy. Like this is the best way is let, tell us your, the challenges you're facing and let us um, understand if case status is going to be a good fit. And look, we're not a good fit for everyone. I mean, we, our main customer base is personal injury, mass tort workers, comp and social security disability. We do sell to some other outside of PI, practice immigration, family law, bankruptcy, but let us understand what are the challenges you're facing today? Like if your only problem right now is getting medical records, we're not the solution for you. That, you know, we are, yeah, (laughs) we don't have those problems because you're using case care. And so, um, but let us understand the things that you're trying um, to do. You know, is it scaling your staff? Is it, is it managing your staff? Is it um, client satisfaction? Those are all things that we can really dive into. And, uh, and we want to be transparent. These are how, these are the ways we can help, um, and these are the ways we can't. And uh, and and if there's a, a mutual fit, a long term partnership, we you know we want to be part of that. And Emily just shared this. I was about to to let you all know. So thank you, Emily, for dropping that in the chat. But yeah, if you click that solutions button, 
um, and you'll see integrations on there and you'll see case bear on there and the, the case status team put together a really nice step-by-step -step guide in terms of activating the integration. Um, and again, they'll, you know, they'll certainly help walk you through it and all that, especially as a new, a new client. But, um, but anyway, just, uh, really excited to have a great step-by-step -step like that too. Thank you guys. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, I no doubt there's going to be other questions. So Andy, this is uh, your contact information and obviously, you know, booking through the website and booking time with your team is, uh, is a really good way, but, uh, but can people reach out to you directly as well? Uh, happy to reach out to me directly. I'm not the most, I'm not going to be the most efficient at getting back to you, but um, we, uh, we have about 15 folks on our sales team that are eager to um, see if case status can be a solution for you. And, um, and, you know, especially knowing that you know we've already been able to talk a little bit i mean it just makes their job so much easier because sometimes we talk to folks who they just you know from the outside case status is an app and how is that going to help you know we we want to really talk about your firm specifically and let's understand what percentage of your business comes from using referrals and how do we actually think we can impact that i mean when you know, when we think we can help you generate 10 or 20 or 100 new clients in the next 12 months, I mean, some people are a little bit shocked. And then when the the return on investment ends up being a fraction of that, I mean, let us help understand if that exists. And if it doesn't, you know, then maybe we can, over time, we can build to that. Um, or maybe there's other opportunities for us to help. Well, I love you sharing all those stats with us because at the end of the day, it comes down to numbers. And I think that uh, those really speak for themselves. So thank you. Um, well, all right, everyone, feel free to reach out to Case Status with any questions. You guys have my email and my contact. I love to hear from our law firm. So please don't hesitate to reach out. And uh, again, I'm, I'm really excited about this partnership, Andy, and look forward to more uh, law firms and their clients benefiting from Case Status and, and our integration. Awesome. And we're looking forward to uh, the conference later this year. That we'll Yeah, have. coming up in October for uh, the My Case of Finifam, Finipay. So yeah, very excited that you guys are supporting us there. And, uh, and for those of you, uh, we'll be sharing more information on that uh, over time. So stay tuned. All right, everyone. Have a great day. Thanks so much for joining us. Yep, thanks, everyone. Take care. Bye.